If you suffer from cervicogenic headaches, a headache disorder that's triggered from pain in the upper neck, and you've tried chiropractor, acupuncture, massage, dry needling, chin, McKinsey, chin tucks, etc., and you're still having frequent headaches. Good news, in this video, we're gonna dive into the best research proven exercises to give you not only short-term relief, but long-term relief. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Mauro Burnett, physical therapist and owner of Australian Physiotherapy Specialist Physical Therapy Center here in Jacksonville, Florida. And over my 23 year career, I've been able to help thousands of patients recover from cervicogenic headache pain. One of the things that got me into cervicogenic headache care was the research done by a famous Australian researcher, Gwendolyn Jewell. In this video, we're going to talk about Gwendolyn Jewell's research. We're going to talk about her diagnostic criteria to help us determine if you're having a cervicogenic headache. We're going to define cervicogenic headache. And most importantly, we're going to give you the exercises in her research that were found to be effective. Cervicogenic headaches are a secondary headache, secondary from pain emanating from the neck, especially the upper three or four vertebra, C1, 2, 3, and 4. Cervicogenic headache information is still relatively new. It was 1983 when a researcher named Suggested et al. suggested that cervicogenic headaches should be a headache classification by itself. But it wasn't until 2004 before it was really accepted into the International Headache Society's book. So what causes a cervicogenic headache? Pain in the upper neck, the nerves in the upper neck send their information up to the brain and they cross wires with a tissue called the cervical trigeminal nucleus. The cervical trigeminal nucleus also connects to nerves that go off to your head and face, nerves like the trigeminal nerve. The trigeminal nerve is one of your cranial nerves. It goes off above your eyebrow into your forehead, into your sinus cavity, and into your jaw. So if your upper neck is really sore and that pain is crossing wires with this nucleus, you could have pain experienced in the head and face when it's actually starting from the neck. Some of my patients have actually been able to palpate their upper neck and they would describe that they would feel pain off into the face and head as I'm palpating. So speaking of that, that's a good segue. Let's go into the research proven diagnostic criteria to know if you're having a cervicogenic headache. X-ray, MRI, blood tests, right? They're not sensitive enough to tell us if you're having a cervicogenic headache. However, research done at the University of Queensland over the last 22 years has given us research proven criteria to be able to tell if your headaches are coming from your neck. And they were able to delineate cervicogenic headaches from migraine and tension type headaches. They used diagnostic blocks for their testing. There's three bits of criteria that we're going to go over. And let's go over the first one. The first one is called neck signs of the upper neck. What that means is if I press on my upper neck, if you find right below your skull and right adjacent, maybe to the right of your spine and you press into that tissue, if that produces pain, discomfort, tightness, then that would be a joint sign of your upper neck. That would be C1. You go a little bit, maybe a finger's width down below and palpate the second vertebra and you could keep going down to the top two or three vertebra. If that produced nausea, maybe dizziness, maybe headache or discomfort, and that would be positive for a joint sign. Of course, you could do that on both sides. The second test that was research proven to identify cervicogenic headaches was a loss of range of motion. Here's an easy test that you can do. Turn your neck to the left as far as you can comfortably. Then compare that to turning your neck to the right as far as you can comfortably. Does one side feel tighter than the other? Is there an asymmetry? Does it produce pain? Does it produce headache? If there's tightness, discomfort, or limitation, that is a positive sign when we're looking at this criteria for cervicogenic headaches. You can also look at cervical extension versus cervical flexion. And lastly, we could look at cervical side bend. We're looking for pain, discomfort, or an asymmetry. Now let's look at our third test. Our third test is weakness of the deep muscles in the front of the neck, called the deep neck flexors, the longus coli and the longus capitis. So and when they did their testing, they found in one research study, 200 people had hurt their neck in car accidents, that they were 50 to 75% weaker in the front of the neck, these deep neck flexors, compared to a group of people that weren't having headaches. So here's an easy test that you can do. Lie down in your bed, 
rest your head on a pillow. Then what you're going to do, tuck your chin in a little bit like you're making a crease at your jawline, right? You tuck it in. And then once you do this, you can, while it's tucked in, you're going to try to lift your head off of the pillow maybe a couple inches. And then you're going to look to see if you can hold that for 20 or 30 seconds without shaking, without high effort, discomfort. Of course, if this is causing you to be nauseous, giving you a headache or making you really dizzy, abort the test, put your head back down onto the pillow. You just tested positive. But in a scoring for someone that hasn't had neck pain, they don't have headaches frequently, normally you can hold that for 20 to 30 seconds. Easy test to do. Try it in your bed and see how it tests out. Now, the research found that if you only have one positive of these three tests, it wasn't clinically significant. But if you had all three, that was very clinically significant to identify cervicogenic headaches. Well, now that we've gone over the criteria of testing to see if you might possibly be a cervicogenic headache sufferer, now we're going to get into the exercises that were research proven to decrease cervicogenic headaches. In 2002, at the University of Queensland, a large research study was done led by researcher Gwendolyn Jewell, who I've been fortunate enough to be able to study with personally. That's where I learned this information from. In the study, 200 people were entered into the study that had neck pain and frequent headaches. After six weeks of exercise plus gentle manual therapy, they were found to have a massive reduction in headache frequency, anywhere from 60 to 90 percent reduction that they maintained when a one-year follow-up was completed. So we're going to get into the exact exercises they did in the research study. If you're interested in information on this study, I'll put a link in the description of the video. Our next exercise is called the push up with a plus. It can be done in multiple positions, but we're going to pick out kind of a basic position. We're going to get on a hands and knees position. From a hands and knees position, you've got your wrist underneath your shoulders, your knees directly underneath your hips. What you're going to do is gently press through the heel of your hands. And what you'll notice is as you press through, your back goes up in between your shoulder blades. You then hold that for six to 10 seconds and then gently relax. Press through the heel of your hands, push your chest goes up in between your shoulder blades, hold that for 10 seconds and relax. And we're gonna build up to where you could do 10 repeats. It's important on this exercise that you're not arching your back. This is not the cat cow exercise in yoga. It's the push up with a plus. It's a little bit different. We want a straight back while you're doing it. You just press through the heel of your hands, hold it six to 10 seconds and relax. You're also getting a nice isometric exercise for the neck as well, because you're holding it and not letting your head go forward. As long as you're holding it against gravity in that position, the neck extensor muscles are getting a workout as well. This will be a once a day exercise, 10 seconds, 10 times, added to your routine. This was one of the exercises in the 2002 research study that showed a massive decrease in cervicogenic headaches and not only in the short term, but in the long term. This is going to be a great exercise to strengthen the muscles in the back of your neck. So what we want to do is get on kind of a hands and knees position. Once we're in this hands and knees position, you gently press through your hands just to make sure that your mid back doesn't sag between your shoulder blades, right? So you push through your hands, make sure it's comfortable. Now what we're going to do is this. I'm going to start neutral. I'm going to lower my head like I'm looking down towards my knees. And then I carefully come back up maybe to where my fingertips are. I look down towards my knees, come back up. I'm going to maybe build up to where I could do 10 or 15 reps, right? I want to make sure that the exercise is comfortable. For one person, they might be able to look all the way down to their knees. For another person, they may only lower a few centimeters and come back to neutral. But this could be a great exercise to build up to where you could do two or three sets of 10, possibly four sets of 10, and you could start doing this at least once a day. If you find that hands and knees is too uncomfortable, this can also be done on your stomach, propped on your elbows. We can do the same exercise that way as an alternative position. Build up to three sets of 10, give it a try, and see if it gives you some relief. All right, for our third exercise, this is a research proven exercise to help decrease neck pain and neck pain related headaches, etc. It's an exercise that's gonna address that massive shrink loss through the deep neck flexors. We mentioned earlier, 
The one study had 50 to 75% strength loss. So this is kind of how it goes. I want a little bit of a, a folded towel square. I want to make sure that my chin and forehead are level. If, you, uh, if your spine is totally straight, you may not need a lot of toweling, but for me, I need a little bit of toweling to get straight. So this is what we're gonna do. My hand is gonna rest on the front neck muscles. These are my superficial muscles, and I wanna make sure that they're not engaged during this exercise. So I look down with my eyes at a point on the ceiling just above my knees. And then I gently nod my chin forward, very slow, very precise, making sure that I don't tighten these superficial muscles. Once I reach that point, I'm still looking down. I hold that for 10 seconds. At the end of 10 seconds, I look up towards the ceiling right above me, and then I slowly come back and relax. And that would be rep one. You could repeat this 10, 12 times, and this can easily be a twice a day exercise. It's important that it doesn't cause pain in the back of the neck. It's also important that we're not lifting. Lifting is the number one error that people make. It's also not a McKinsey chin retraction. I'm not pushing back. It's a look down, point on the ceiling, above my knees, nod very smoothly, very gently. Make sure the muscles don't get tight. If they start getting tight, then back off just a little bit. Hold it for 10 seconds, then relax back to this point right above here. And that's gonna be a great deep neck flexor exercise. Give it a try. If it goes well with you, put it in your routine. For this exercise, we're gonna address weakness in the middle and lower trapezius muscles. This is something that's found commonly when you're having neck pain or cervicogenic headaches. So here's how the exercise works. You lie down in your bed, lie on your side, get one of your pillows that you love to sleep on that make you comfortable lying on your side. Then you stack up two or three pillows in front of you and you stretch your arm over those pillows kind of like a body pillow, right? You're going to have your arm not just 90 degrees, but you're going to have your arm angled up, maybe like 130 degrees. From that position, you're going to draw your arm back and down over your chest wall towards the center of your spine. You hold that position for 10 seconds and then gently return to your starting position. Gently draw your shoulder blade back and down, going over the, your back towards the center. Hold that for six to 10 seconds and relax. Try to build up to where you could do 10 or 12 reps. And this could easily be a twice a day exercise. Well, thanks for tuning in for today's video. Check out Physio Tips with Mara. We've got a deep library of exercises to help with cervical headaches, cervical dizziness. Make sure that you check out some of the videos. Remember, you could subscribe to our channel to receive more videos like this in the future. We try to put out a video every week or two with some great tips. Don't forget to share this with any loved ones or friends if they're having cervical headaches. Thanks for watching. It's goodbye for now, and we'll see you next time on Physio Tips with Mara.